Hey guys, Lightain here, and as Utawea Ramono Month comes to an end, I'm going to have a look at the last game that has been released in English, Utawea Ramono Zan, and see if it's worth it. Utawera Ramono Zan was released in September 2018 for Japanese audiences, and then a year later in September 2019 for the West. That means this spin-off, which is based on the second game of the series, came out before the first game in the series ever came to the West. Zan was made by Tamsoft, who have worked on and made so many games it's just hard to fathom. These include the Onichinibara series, which I'll have to talk about one day, they're just insane. Anyway, Zan does not tell an original story in the series, instead it tells an abridged version of Mask of Deception. So once again we follow Haku, he has amnesia, meets many interesting people and gets caught up in a world changing plot, but you know it's just the bare bones of all of this by now. So the reason for all of this is to have a game with familiar characters and story, but with drastically different gameplay. Gone is the strategy RPG combat, and in its place we have a Musu game. You know those kinds of games like Dynasty Warriors, Hyrule Warriors, or Samurai Warriors, man that's a lot of warriors out there. And now we have a more action orientated game. You get to play as and unlock all of the main characters found in Mask of Deception and play expanded battles based on the events in that game. Like at the start of the story when Haku is with Kuan in the snow running away from the bunch of Gigiri. You get to play as they try and escape. So let's talk about that gameplay. Picking your team before a level, with some characters being mandatory due to the story, you are thrown into either an arena or a large level full of enemies. There are usually hundreds of bad guys that you'll need to fight in order to progress through the stage. Your moves consist of a standard combo with square, a heavy heavy attack with triangle which can be added to any part of your standard combo, a charged square attack with a charged triangle attack as well. Now there's some nuance when it comes to jumping and dash attacking and stuff like that, but that's pretty much all the moves you'll get. As you play, you'll also learn some special attacks that you will need enough energy to use. These could be a heal for your entire team or just deal a really strong hit. There you go, that's pretty much all there is to the game. To say that the combat is simple is an understatement, but it doesn't play badly. In fact, I think it handles and play is just fine. It's fun enough without being too complex. The complexity comes from the different characters. Each of them have different attacks based on their character and the game Mask of Deception. That makes each character feel vastly different from one another. Haku has quick but weak attacks. Serana and Ururu have high damage magic but it casts so slowly which leaves you more vulnerable. And then we have Jack DeWalt with his flashy sword moves and a counter attack. It was really fun to change characters which you can also do on the fly in battle as well, and see how they attack and what they can do. Now, I didn't like them all, Kirui was a boring character to use, but you know, that's personal preference, at least he's there. The main problem is that aside from these special moves, you don't unlock any new way of fighting over the course of the game. No new combos, no new weapons, there's nothing which can leave the game feeling a little stale after a few hours. Once you've seen every character, there isn't anything left. Even the variety of game modes are all derivatives of the same idea. Use your team, fight a horde of enemies, and sometimes a boss. The only kind of exception to this are the fights where you can only use one character in order to unlock their last special move. There is also an online mode, but when I played the game, no one else did, so I can't talk about it. I have no idea what the experience is like. Okay, I may have been a little bit too harsh about no weapons and stuff. There is a little bit of nuance here. The first is after every battle, you earn some BP, which you can spend on your stats. Each stat also has a milestone on it, and if you hit it, you get a big bonus to that stat. There also is some equipment in the form of scrolls in the game. These can up your attack damage or give you a special effect like pierce or longer combo chains. There aren't too many to unlock though, and some of them are just upgrades to the ones that you find at the beginning of the game. So the majority of the time, I just use the the defense up, the attack up, and maybe the pierce if I needed it. It was pretty much the same setup for every character for every fight. So while there is something there, I would say it's uh, pretty bare bones. Oh, except the costume change? Well, that isn't fair. It's full of clothes, of course. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm making bad puns because of how simple it all is. But the worst part of the game, in my opinion, is the story. Being an abridged version of a very long, very intricate game, it tells a horrible story. Sections are rushed so you can just get into the next fight. Major plot points are dropped or forgotten and 95% of the slice of life is just discarded. And if you played this game before you played Mask of Deception, it just ruins the whole thing. So that begs the question, who is this made for? Is it made for big fans? If that's the case, why retell the story at all? There are plenty of places where they could have added a new side story, expanded upon the world, and just have some fun. They do try to do this at times, but it's so little. Like there's an extra boss fight against Deco Pompo on the barge, which wasn't in the original game. I think they tried to add some original story and variety with the extra mode, because the extra fights are against different kinds of enemies in different locations, and they have like a little blurb beforehand. But but that's all it is, it's just a little blurb of why you're fighting there. No one's gonna read those. So once again, I come back to the question, who is this aimed for? New players will have the main story dumbed down and sped up, ruining the entire game that it's based on, then finding a vanilla and bare bones game beneath it all. Returning players who want something new will get a fighting style of a game and some new scenes and that's about it. The game is also pretty short where you can get everything in about 15 to 20 hours. If you want to level every character to max it might take you a little bit longer but uh, you don't get anything for that. I get that this is meant to be a silly spin-off kind of game but they should have really leaned into that silly side. Give us more fights, set up the silly new story, and expand upon the current lore. Now with all that said, my original playthrough of the game was fun enough. I really enjoyed playing as each of the characters and just seeing what they would do. I liked some of the fights and ideas, I even liked the new remixed music found in the game. But around the halfway point, that's when I hit a wall. I had seen all that this game had to offer, so it became more of a slog to get through. It's also not very hard. Outside of those solo levels, they could be pretty tough. Also, there is a hard mode in the game, but I found that pretty easy as well up until the very last fight. Oh, in case you're wondering, my favorite characters to use were Haku, Kuon, Atui, and Jack DeWalt. I beat most of the game with that party, and I got the platinum. So in my opinion, Utuera Ramono Zan is not worth it. As a side game, it doesn't offer nearly enough to warrant a play through. The combat is very simple and doesn't offer much in customization or anything new as you play. After unlocking all the characters, that's pretty much all you're gonna get and it becomes stale. Then there's the way it shortens the story. It just baffles me because it doesn't have a true target audience now. New players stay away from this game. Trust me, you do not want to spoil Mask of Deception. And old players, I guess you can play it if you want, but keep your expectations low. Also when writing, filming and editing this episode, Zan 2 is out in Japan. The trailers make it look better and I hope it is a better game. No word on localization, so maybe I'll review it if it ever comes out here. So guys, tell me what you thought about Utawe Ramono Zan. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Can you tell me why this game exists? Because I have no idea. Also, if you played the multiplayer, let me know how that experience was. And don't forget to comment down below, like, subscribe, all that junk, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!